Hey, what's going on? This is part five of my guitar build. My name's Chris. Welcome to my channel. You can see I was working on the sound hole. Got it cut out. Looking pretty good. All right, so I had to go a little bit smaller on the sound hole. I ended up about 94 point something millimeters big instead of the 98.5 that the plans call for. I don't think it'll really mess it up. I hope not, but uh, there may be a little bit difference in, you know, the sound of the way the more, more bass than, than if the sound hole were bigger. I don't know. So anyway, I'm trying to plan on the braces for the soundboard. Uh, one of the things I thought about in this consideration that I need to take into account is the Florentine cutaway part and where the braces come to up there. So I don't want to, you know, put the bracing on and then discover that, oops, my Florentine cutaway is in the way. So let me show you what I'm looking at. So I've just got the guitar rim set sitting on top of the plans. Um, I remember when I cut it out and I made this Florentine, I tried to make it to where the upper transverse bar could go all the way across and wouldn't impede. So, so the only one would be this tongue depressor up here that may need to be installed after I attach the top, just so I can get it exactly cut up and you know joined up with the with the little kerfing right there. So, everything else will be just fine. Um, so I'm going to plan as normal down here. I'm going to install the upper transverse brace and just hold off on the tongue depressor. What I got to do is get started on the bracing. So first up is the X brace. Here's my stock. I'm going to go ahead and radius the bottom of it, pre-scallop it, cut it in half, and then uh, <laughs> I'll see if I can get it glued in. I've been working on it for a little bit, so uh, it's going in pretty good. So I think I'm just off just a tad from where I originally marked the X. I think it'll be okay. So let me go check it in the on the soundboard. So I guess there's nothing left to do but to glue this thing in, right? I'm going to go ahead and radius the bottom of this a little bit more just to make sure it's all flat because it is a little bit higher right here. Go ahead and radius that and then I'll meet you at the go bar deck. Let's just do it. Oh, jump sliding everywhere. Good grief. All right, let's get glue on this real quick. Quick like. Golly, tell you. <laughs> oh my goodness. You better get in there. You better get in there. What in the world? Oh, I'm not lined up. There. Feeling good. Feeling good about it. I got a feeling inside my bones. Feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good about it. Can't complain. And uh, and I get I don't know if I commented about this, but I did move this go bar deck. I had to move the go bar deck into my humidity control room. So that I could do this glue up. I don't want to do a cross grain glue up like this in the garage where it's higher humidity. From what I understand, doing cross grain glue ups like this need to be done in a humidity controlled environment at around 45-50%, which is kind of right in between the two extremes. Let's go ahead and get this thing glue cleaned up everywhere. All right, let me finish up with this. Uh, that's all I'm gonna do for the next few minutes anyway, so. So I'll see you in, in a minute. All 
It's been three hours since I glued these in, so I think that we're going to be good to go ahead and take them out. I guess you can see the difference in color between Torrified Sitka and just plain Sitka. So one's a little bit darker. I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not, but I can see it in the room. All right, so now I got to get the tone bars or the finger braces put in. I'm going to work on that right now. All right, just an update. I went ahead and made the finger braces and the tone bars. I've got the finger braces glued in and I'm about to add these tone bars. So after I get done with that, that'll be all of the lower bracing. And then I've got the top bracing to worry about. All right, let me work on this. Get this other one put in and I'll catch back up. Tone bars are in. All that's left is the upper bracing, the upper transverse bar, and the tongue depressor sound hole bracing. Feeling pretty good right now. I'm gonna wait till later, take this off, and then I'll uh, move on to the next part. And all that bracing you just saw, the sound hole bracing and the tongue depressor above the upper transverse bar, you didn't miss anything. All I did was plane the wood down to about two and a half, three millimeters, and then cut it in pieces and glued it in, just like you saw the X brace and everything else. So you didn't miss anything. But now I gotta make the bridge plate. And just a side note, um, I am posting lots of background pictures and videos on my Instagram channel of the whole build, of more than what you're seeing in this video, all right? So my name is here on the screen. CMR wood if you want to follow along. All right, here's the bridge patch. It's a piece of maple. Uh, I wasn't going to use any rosewood, but when I was placing the order, I was already buying stuff from Stu Mac, uh, so I threw it in the buggy, and I guess I'll just try maple out this time. Here's the template I made during my last guitar build. Now, I've got to thin this down, uh, probably close to half of what it is now, but there ain't no way I'm going to try to thickness that whole thing. So I'm just going to kind of cut out a little piece that's a little bit bigger than the template. So that all I got to do is just thickness that one little piece and it'll be easier to do. So about there, about there. Then I can cut this out and then get it glued in. I know what the measurement is from the 14th fret, so I just need to go ahead and mark that. I ended up not even trimming all the way to the line of the template. So that just means there's some variation in the way I happen to glue those down. But uh, it looks like it's fitting pretty good. So I guess I'm about ready to glue it in. Oh, you know what? I wasn't going to say anything about this because I wasn't sure. But I'm trying to radius the bottom of the bridge plate just a little bit. I ended up just a little bit thicker so that I could do a little bit of radiusing. Because I know this goes kind of on the radius part. And if it's just a flat piece, I didn't know if that affected the radius of the top or could try to draw it in right there. So it's just a question I had in my mind during the last guitar build. I'm not really sure if this is okay to do or not. So I wasn't even going to say anything about it, but I'm not doing much. Just a little bit so that it'll fit that curve a little bit better. Maybe thin it out a little bit more. I don't know. Just kind of going off of uh, just a question I had in my mind. So... I guess I was kind of embarrassed to mention that I was doing it because I wasn't sure, but I've shown every other mistake I've made, so what was <laughs> what's one more, you know? If this is not right, it is what it is, and it's going in the guitar like this. So I've been on vacation for the last week and while I was on vacation I was just thinking about all this stuff, you know, thinking about what I wanted to do next. You know, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I want to close the box, get the back done, close the box. And you know, looking at this again, just taking a gander at it, you know, the, the cutaway will be here on this side, you know, because I'll be holding it like this. So that's where the cutaway goes, right? So, uh, so why in the world did I put the brace <laughs> right here? The brace should have gone on the other side. Look, I even marked it on the wrong side. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. 
but it, it occurred to me on vacation that I marked the wrong side. So, so that means I got to get this brace off. So I've got my bending iron here getting hot and I bought a, I went to Michael's and bought a, a putty, what a putty knife or a, a palette knife, an artist palette knife. So I'm going to try to heat this thing up and uh, try to remove a brace. So let's do it. You know, I really hope I don't mess this up. Um, really, the only reference I have for this is Jerry from Rosa Stringworks. I'm just placing this paddle knife on top of the bending iron to get it hot. And uh, I don't know how hot it needs to be. I'm going to place it on there for a little while. And uh, I've watched him remove enough braces on his video, so I'm hoping it goes kind of the same. I'm not sure if it will. Okay, hey, it's already starting to go on there. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. All right. I'm just going to keep doing this and hope it works out. Just keep on working on this. You know, I feel I, tear, I hear tearing. I hope I'm not like ripping off fibers from the Sitka. I, really, I would really hate to lose this top. I really would. Oh, there we go. Right through the through the brace. Okay, so I'm not really getting it underneath. I'm more or less just broken into the middle of it. I gotta be careful because I don't want to like pull up on this and then pull up some of the Sitka with it. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you can see that, but I do have a lot of it up. I mean, it's all the way up. All through here. I was not expecting this. I was not expecting this. Let me go ahead and try to clean the rest of this up, and then I'll catch back over here. So, you can see what I've done. I'm not happy perfectly with the result. I mean, you can see where I accidentally ripped up some. Uh, Sitka spruce mm -hmm. there, so definitely not perfect. I need to do some more scraping I think right here with a razor blade to get some of this off and over here, but uh, I don't know. I'll just try not to do that on the next guitar. All right, it's been a few days, and you can see I got it moved over. So I made a whole nother brace. I cleaned it up some more after what I showed you just a minute ago in that last clip. I kind of measured about where the Florentine part will be, and I added the brace there. So. At this point, I've got a couple of more braces to add. One that goes here and that spans, you know, this joint on the X. And then a couple of more down here just for insurance purposes to make sure that that seam is good. Um, but I, before I get started with that, I want to go ahead and just start doing some of the initial voicing, which would be, uh, in, the way I learned it, just kind of thinning down the edges of the X's and this upper transverse bar. So I'm going to get started on that today and maybe tonight it's the end of the week is friday i'm off of work now so i don't have a whole lot of time but i want to at least get started a head start on the weekend so i'm gonna get these uh, braces on here tonight before i go to bed that way in the morning i can work on finishing the voicing on the top so let me get started to why are you burning why are you burning i'm building a guitar oh why you do that for i have to voice it it's got a voice like you why why you do these why you got pop too There are the small insurance pieces. I got them glued on. There's the one that goes over the X. And uh, if I was planning ahead a little bit better, I could have made sure that I made the X joint such a way that that piece would go this way. So you can see these pieces are moving this way, but I've got the X one going this way because of the way I cut the joint. So, oh well, uh, not much I could do about that. I'll just have to try to plan ahead next time. I guess on my previous guitar, I just got lucky and cut it the right way. Check this out. I'm working on getting these down to about the thickness of a veneer. I'm almost there with this one. I got this one done, but last time I just used my chisel to get in between them. 
But I've got this other plane now from Lee Nielsen, this little small violin maker's plane. And it fits right in between these two braces, so it's kind of nice. So I'll be able to use this to thin that down instead of having to do some sketchy stuff with my chisel. I didn't have this on the last build, but I've gotten it since then, and I like it. Here's how it looks so far. Um, I mean, the tone sounds good. I, You know, this is only my second guitar, so I'm not really sure where to stop, and I don't want to go continue going thinner and thinner on these scallop parts, so because they have to support a lot of a lot of uh, tension. So I may stop right here and just kind of, you know, sand everything down. That'll take off a little bit more of the height of them too. So I've done the best I can do with the knowledge that I have and the experience that I have. I think I'm at least good to go for now. Now just one comment. I don't know if anybody else has experienced this, but I guess after pushing for so long on this chisel, uh, my thumb starts to go numb. I remember this happening on the last guitar. So I took a break and then I came back to it and it went numb a lot faster than it did the first time. I went for about maybe 30 minutes before my thumb started feeling numb the first time. So does anybody else experience that? I hope it's not just me. <laughs> Taking a little break from the soundboard before I start sanding and I uh, figured I might as well start on the headstock and maybe at least get the shape cut out, get the holes uh, drilled and stuff. So this is the previous guitar's headstock shape and this is the one for this guitar so what i did was i just basically thinned up the top a little bit and i brought up this point up higher than on this one uh just i thought this was a little too chunky looking so i've just slimmed it up just a little bit so a little bit different not insanely different but what i've done is i've cut a shape into the back of here so that i can put that on my headstock or sorry on the neck uh double stick tape it and then cut it out so I'm going to go ahead and do that. There we go. I just got to shave up to that line with my spindle sander. And you can see I already marked where the holes will go. So, so I'm going to go ahead and shape this and then drill those out. I'm going to go ahead and call it here. I can't remember exactly all where this video started and where it ends. You just watched it. So uh, I think I cut it off after the rosette last time. And um, I just got all the braces put together for the top. I got the top voice pretty much. And I've got the headstock done. So I feel pretty good. Some pretty good progress. Um, still waiting for my drum sander. The drum sander I told you about last week. Or sorry, in the last video. I still have not received it. It's been almost two months. And uh, I did call Grizzly and they checked into the situation and it indeed was lost by the shipping company. So they sent me another one free of charge and it's been in Chattanooga for a week now. So I'll probably call them today just to check. Uh, going on two months now without, you know, this drum sander. I'm supposed to have the back done by now and glued to the rim set. So um, hopefully I'll get it in pretty soon and I'll be able to move forward. But that's why I'm kind of jumping around. I jumped to the headstock and knocked that out. It's one more step done. I think it's looking pretty good. Just one side note here. I did add one more little patch right here. Uh, this crack, I don't know if you can see it inside in the camera, but there's a dark line here and a dark line here, the same distance from the center. And I don't remember which one it was that cracked a couple of videos back. I think it was this one. Well, anyway, whatever the case may be, you know, the bracing is helping hold all that together. And you got the two tone bars here hoping to hold that together. So got a lot of real estate right here that just did not have any support and I was afraid it's gonna crack. So I went ahead and put a little patch. I don't know what that'll do to the, the voicing, but I thought it was necessary just for insurance, all right? So thanks for watching. I really appreciate you checking it out. I'm gonna go ahead and sand all of the bracing and the inside of the top down um, in between this video and next. And uh, hopefully we'll get my drum sander soon and I'll meet you again in the next video. See you later, bye.